a dating app that was founded six years ago in Singapore. And two years ago, Pactor merged with a Taiwanese live streaming, um, live streaming platform to form M17 Entertainment. And Joseph is the CEO there today. You raised about 140 million USD in the process. Um, before we talk about M17 Entertainment, let's take a step back and talk about Pactor. Now Pactor is part of the group. What is happening to Pactor? What are the plans for it? Hello. Okay, this works. Okay. Um, uh, so Pactor was founded back in 2013 off a very simple premise, right, to connect people. I founded the company off my own experience. I was dumped in 2012, and I wanted to build an, a dating application. It was never meant to be a business. It was more for me to meet people. And um, I actually... Uh, the first product didn't allow guys to sign up. It was only for girls, and I was the only guy on the platform. <laughs> right? um, it, was, it was pretty good, right? And then we started receiving a lot of complaints. So guys would enter, um, click mail, and then they would say, please wait list. Right? And, and, and I think uh, after three days, I had to make a decision if I wanted to make it a business or uh, if I wanted to um, build it out into a, a business. Right? Um, and... Um, it's been six years. So Pacto is right now across uh, regional Asia, ex-China, ex-India. We're in the business of both online and offline premium dating. We make meaningful connections, and we hope to deepen these connections across localized networks uh, across, uh, across, the, across the region. So uh, when, when you ask me what are plans for the future, I think it's still in Asia, and it's still about deepening. It's still about building products that people care about, we have over, I, I can't keep count now, I think 10, 10 products within, within a group, service in online dating, offline dating, voice dating, premium matchmaking, image consulting, date consulting. Come meet me if you're single. I'll give you a free date package, and then we can talk about upselling you. So it sounds like uh, the plans are still on track, and they didn't change much after the merger. Is that, uh, that's what I understand from it. Um, the merger itself um, happened, but it seems the two companies are still run separately. And um, uh, looking at that, I'm wondering what are the sort of synergies that were created when you merged the two companies? It's quite different industries and two different brands still until today. Yeah, so I, I met Jeff, my co-founder, who founded Seventeen Media back in 2014. Um, under very different circumstances. So he had started a dating application in, in Taiwan, and I was trying to poach his co-founder. And because um, we were competing each, each other, he built it for like a year. It was very awkward, because the first meeting that I set up was actually with his co-founder, but he came as well. And um, so that didn't end well, but we kept in touch uh, over the next two years. And I met him again back in 2016, um, after having spent some time building out our dating application in Taiwan, and he had exited the dating business and he moved into live streaming, he was actually facing some challenges with regards to fundraising, and he was looking at me and he was like, I don't understand how this dating application from Singapore with some presence in Southeast Asia is able to raise money year on year on year. I need to meet Joe and I need to learn from him. And, and so that was the meeting, the premise of the meeting, and we met, and I was looking for further growth. I was looking for an area where we could build our business, bring our expertise, and develop extra uh, value creation uh, work to our shareholders. And social entertainment, live streaming entertainment presented that opportunity, and, and it was actually a meeting of needs. Now, to Numi's question, um, we actually did not merge the businesses together. We did not integrate the businesses together because uh, we were growing like a rocket. I didn't want to actually slow the process. So to give you a sense, um, in 2016, um, the dating business was doing about four million a year. Live streaming business was doing about three million a year. So seven million, seven million in 2016. And in 2017, we did 90. In 2018, we did 180. This year, we're on track to doing 300-ish. Right? So in terms of scale, in terms of size, in terms of speed, the company's grown from 80 people to today, we're, we're, we're closing in on 1,000. And, um, but this is off the back of actually not finding integration. We started working on exchanging expertise, knowledge exchange, to ensure that both companies can run independently and, and just run. 
So no merging due to cost reason or to, to get um, take advantage of each other's customer base, so purely to share the expertise. So you had matching expertise, if I can sum summarize that. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, let's talk about M17 Entertainment and last year. So last year you uh, tried to go for listing at the New York Stock Exchange. You actually went for listing, but it was sort of aborted on the same day itself. So it created a lot of headlines, and I think a lot of people here in the room probably read about it. So my question is just, how were you feeling that day uh, when all of this happened? Hey. <laughs> hey I'm not just sure. Just describe if, a little bit I'm on, not sure um, if, if what went through your mind on that day itself. I'm not sure if feeling was a word, mm. right? I don't think there were any feelings that day. Uh, it was more about, um, you know, you go from a high to a low, and then you're in shock, and then you're like, Okay, but when, when, you, when you're faced in this situation, usually shock response comes, kicks in, right? And I went four days straight without sleeping, and I, I barely ate, and in that, in that four days, we tried to find a resolution. So I don't think feeling was the word. I think it was more about trying to resolve the problem at hand. One of the KYCs was not done properly, and I think everybody in the process made, made some mistakes along the way, and we had to resolve it, and uh, it turned out we couldn't resolve it, right? Problems after problems after problems came up, and we ended up deciding after four days. So it was Thursday, and then Monday, New York time, we decided to pull, uh, pull, pull the plug on it. And that was when I started feeling, right? So four days of numbness and trying to figure out, trying to figure out how to fix problems, and then, uh, and then you start feeling. And then you look around, I mean, my, my wife, my kid, uh, they were there, and I, I don't think it was, it was more about, okay, I need to spend time with my family now, right? But how do I spend time when I need to deal with a few hundred people waiting for me back in Asia? So I literally watched Netflix for like four days, and I just sat down in the bed. I didn't move, and um, and then that was Friday, and then so I took a flight back from Chicago, where I was at, uh, back to Taiwan, and I started working. Right, so I think I gave very little time to feeling, and even till today, it's a sore topic. It's a very sore topic. I did I did a Tech in Asia article. I did an article with Tech in Asia about a about a three weeks ago, and that was actually to find closure for myself. It's okay to fall. Right, but you need to find closure, you need to move on. Now, have I found closure? I haven't actually found closure. I continue to remember the pain every single day. But that is great. That's why I sleep like two hours a day now. And I, was, I, I got in here last night at about two, one or two o'clock. I woke up uh, at about six after sleeping at four, and I've been me uh, in my first meeting this morning was at eight, breakfast at seven. And so I continue driving and working. Whenever I feel lazy or tired, I bring my memories back to last year. That keeps me driving. And uh, I think that's great for investors. That's great for shareholders. That's why they continue to invest in me, because they know that I have something to prove. I think to, to add on to that, apart from the energy, what are the, the one or two learnings you took from it if you were to go for listing again in the future, let's say? Well, be smart, right? Think for yourself. Don't, don't just listen. Right, think and, and analyze you were trained for a reason. Right, so, so don't, don't, I mean, salespeople will be salespeople. The process will be the process, and the world will tell you what you need to hear when you need to hear it, and then when you don't need to hear stuff, they will tell you things you don't want to hear. And so sometimes take things that you don't want to hear and, and listen. Right? Use your own, own, own mind to think about things. So that is the first thing. I think the second thing is we, we are trained to believe that anything is possible. I have lived off this motto every single day of the last six years, and that's what I tell every single one of my team members. Uh, but sometimes things may not be possible, and so uh, you need to take time. If they're possible, they come at great costs, and they're huge risks. Right? So analyze and balance the risk and rewards, and so now I take a lot of time to think, a lot of time to, to, to measure and assess the risks before making a move. So if you look, last time, every, every month we would have something new. Now it's probably every quarter, and I believe as we, we grow and uh, bigger, it becomes uh, longer and longer. Okay, thanks. Um, just a little bit on the, the, the current situation, right? If we were to speak to your early investors, what are the things they are most happy about right now? What are the things they are most unhappy about right now with how the course of the company is going? I think one of our investors is here. Um, All right, I can ask him after. We can get him on stage too. No, <laughs> but I will ask you first. Uh, you can ask Carmen. Her, her name is Carmen. Vertex has been a 
an incredible supporter alongside uh, Golden Equator Capital, alongside, I'm just naming all the investors that are here today. And uh, all our investors have been awesome. And um, I think one of the things that they, I, I think they would be happy with is the commitment of the management team, right? Uh, that is key, that is core, that is core to every single thing. I mean, Nick talked very nicely about um, uh, macro trends. I, I believe in all of that, right? Because I think I'm right about that. It's almost going to hit me soon. And, um, but I think it's at, at, at the core, it's about the management. And I think uh, the investors should be happy with the way my co-founders and I have conducted ourselves and have continued to build the business, have continued to stand up after we've fallen and continue to believe and watch out for the, va uh, watch out for the value creation of our, our shareholders. So I think that's, that's one. I think what they would be concerned about is possibly, okay, so now what, right? So we are here right now, we were here, now we've fallen a little, what next? Um, I'm, I'm headed to the US uh, this weekend um, to spend about a month there. I have a team of about 20 people now and uh, we're, we're building up our US operations. We just recently built a team in the Middle East, we're expanding in the Middle East as well. So we're constantly seeking what next. We built our new uh, live commerce business off an acquisition uh, six months after we fell down in New York. We brought on board the head of Zara Asia to join us as the CEO of our live commerce business. She was previously the head of uh, Alibaba International. And so I think we're, we're making great strides, but which of these things will pan out? Right? Are we uh, making correct bets? Are we making bets that are measured? Or are we, uh, are we not pushing hard enough? So I think these are the things that our investors will continue to be thinking about. They're not necessarily upset. I mean, uh, until the day where, I, where we run out of money and I cannot raise any more money, then they'll be upset. But I, 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 we've been profitable for some time now. We continue to be generating quite a bit of cash. So I don't think they have anything to be upset. I think concerned whether or not we can create 100x, right, versus 3x in, in the next uh, three years is, okay. is what they will be looking for. I'm afraid the time is up already. One last quick question. Um, with all the things that are going on, and you mentioned you are constantly exploring new things, and you also have a number of businesses under your M17 Entertainment and a number of brands, what would you say is your focus right now? The one or two things you really work on in the next one to two months? So one thing, right? Mm. I think there's only one thing for focus in 2019. Um, I've done close to 100 and, well, I did my 163rd interview this year of, this year of, uh, uh, I did my 163rd interview this morning of this year, right? This year, since the start, I've taken it upon myself to make sure that every single person that comes into the company, that's close to one interview a day. Every single person that comes into the, the company, the last interview is always with me. Why? I don't care if you are uh, in a receptionist, I don't care if you're the CEO of, uh, of some country, the last interview process is always with me, because I've learned that people make the company, and if I can be the gatekeeper to the people that I bring in, then I think I, I would have a good shot at success. So it's not so much about, hey, am I gonna focus on the US, Middle East, or whatnot. I wanna bring in capable people, develop them, to make sure that these people, plus the plan that I put together, can be executed in a way that I want them to execute it uh, in. So I think that's gonna be the key focus for at least the next six, six, six months, 12 months, yeah. And I think that's a really nice ending as well, focusing on the people and building up your team. Thank you very much, the time is up. Thank you. Thank you.